Welcome to the Female VC Lab podcast. I'm here with Sally. In one line, Sally, can you say your name, your company title, and the name of your fund? Yes, my name is Sally Jan, and I work at SAPIO, which is a corporate venture arm of SAP. And I am the head of SAPIO is the New York program. And we are focused on enterprise software strategic to our parent company, SAP. Wonderful. Wow, this is this is going to be a fascinating conversation. This is great. So Sally, what inspired you to become a venture capitalist or an investor? Yes. So as we both graduated from Berkeley, so yes, go Bears, did. and lucky to have been born out of the Silicon Valley kind of era there going to school in Northern California. And my first job out of college was in investment banking at Morgan Stanley. I was in the TMT group right on Sand Hill Road. So I got early exposure to technology in my career. And I was absolutely in love with the companies and the sub verticals within tech. I covered blue chip public companies as well as private late stage companies. And I knew that I was more interested on the earlier side of tech. And I knew that I loved sitting in meetings with the senior bankers and the management teams and talking about trends and talking about the business models, working closer with the founders and their teams. And so from Morgan Stanley in Silicon Valley, I moved to New York and I joined another firm that was also really tech investment oriented called General Atlantic. And I did this sort of financial services, two plus two type of programs. And I decided I wanted to get gain some experience as an operator. So I did work at two startups before I really do dove into venture capital. And working at startups really helps in terms of opening your eyes to what it's like to be part of a founding 100%. team. 100%. Yeah, <laughs> right. And to be really on the ground doing everything, literally, uh, no matter what your title is. And from there, switched over to venture capital because I knew that I loved the startup world. And I also loved learning about many different businesses. And I was at Seed Invest, which we spoke about briefly. I ran mm -hmm. the venture capital team there while I was at Seed Invest. And that's equity crowdfunding model plus a fund as well. And after that, I joined SAPIO, which I've been net there for three years now, running our New mm -hmm. York SAPIO program. And I get to work with incredible entrepreneurs and I get to sit with them as an advisor. I get to help them. I get to make introductions. I get to leverage resources and my network to really help them succeed however I can in my role now. And what's also really cool about SAPIO is we have this pledge called No Boundaries that was launched about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And that pledge is a commitment by SAP to have 40% underrepresented founders in our SAPIO fund and founders portfolio. Oh, wow, and that's I'm, great. Yes, yeah, I'm really proud to say we're already there. Oh, and wonderful. that, yeah, and that initiative was to have 200 underrepresented led startups by 2023, but we are already at that 40, actually 50% mark. And we continue to strive for more. And in New York specifically, I work with pretty much 100% under uh, represented lead founders. That's wonderful. So what is SAPIO's kind of investment thesis? How do you guys go through? Uh, what's your criterion? And, and how do you determine what kind of companies you're working with? Yeah, so we have our fund and we have our foundries. Our fund has been focused on pre-seed and seed primarily in the past. Mm -hmm. We write small checks of 250K co-investing to start okay. with, with ability to follow on. And our foundries are our no equity accelerator programs where we don't put dollars into the companies, but we put a lot of resources uh, behind it, a lot of championship from within SAP and within the SAP ecosystem. And we partner with startups. 
And this allows us to work with seed all the way through series C startups, because it's much more about partnering together, identifying technology integration opportunities and identifying mm -hmm. business development opportunities with SAP customers. Okay. And okay. I guess I should mention that if I didn't already to just really double click that we work with enterprise software startups. And what I mean by that, they are B2B or yeah. B2B to C mm -hmm. companies. And the best way to just describe high level is that they're startups that already have a strong product in the market already with enterprise customers, like fortune 500 type of customers. Those are mm -hmm. good profiles for SAP IO. Mm -hmm. And I call us our foundries, like a graduate school of accelerators, because a lot of our companies are much later stage, like I mentioned up to series C. So they don't want to learn what they can already learn from Y Combinator or Techstars. They want to learn how to sell, how to go to market. Right. And that's what we're really focused on going to market, enterprise sales, partnership with SAP. And then maybe at scale, like usually if you're a little later stage, you're trying to go at scale. So I would assume that's a yeah. part with the go-to-market that you would concentrate on as well. Yeah, that's definitely our focus. So what are you learning or listening to or reading these days? Yeah, I, I, we all have a lot of free time when during COVID. So I've definitely yes. taken advantage of this time to read more, listen to more podcasts, take on some new hobbies. Hobby wise, I've picked up tennis over the past year. Love tennis. I'm obsessed now. It's great for outdoors activity. And reading wise, I've recently read Minor Feelings mm -hmm. and Talking to Strangers. Yeah. So that Talking to Strangers, Malcolm Gladwell, mm -hmm. Minor Feelings is Kathy Hong Park or Kathy Park Hong. And one is more of a business book or sort of being like self-help talking with strangers, which is around getting to understand how, how to communicate better with people, how to understand where people are coming from, to understand the environment and setting that you meet somebody. And mm -hmm. they use, he, welcome, Gladwell was, uses like real use case, uh, real case studies into yeah. the book. Mm -hmm. For example, people like Amanda Knox, who are, who are like wrongly accused of a crime yeah. or, yeah, or in um, certain situations where Adolf Hitler was assumed to be a friendly to when Winston Churchill and Chamberlain visited him and things like that. So just getting like a feel for how to understand people's communication styles and how to trust and how to take not and not take everything with uh, take things or, you know, with a grain of salt and things like that. So talking to strangers about communication in a lot of ways. And then minor feelings, I've been really personally, obviously invested in all of the Asian American Pacific Islander topics and a lot of the discrimination that's been happening over the past year to people of color and minorities. And this book is about Asian Americans and all the different types of trials and tribulations they've had in America, particularly around you know the race topics. And it seems it's just super, super topical for what we're going through right now. And a lot of the history, a lot of the different Asian American movements in the U.S. are brought, brought to light that I had never even known as an Asian American myself. And so I feel like anyone who's a minority, not just Asian, who reads this book it can really resonate with the experience. Or if you just want to understand the minority experience, I think it's a really good book to explore. All right. Thank you so much for that. So I always have the one bonus question, which is in two years, Sally, when we're speaking again, and hopefully we're speaking before then, but when we speak again in two years, how do you see venture or investing having evolved or changed? Yeah, I think my hope is in two years that the venture world will be friendlier to founders of all backgrounds, shapes, size, color, anything. That's my hope that it will be a lot more democratized and mm -hmm. that the playing field and the access will be a lot more open across everyone and anyone. And to do that, obviously we need to change people's 
uh, mindsets, but we also mm -hmm. need to increase the number of resources and tools and yes. vendors and programs like SAPIO, where we have uh, that commitment to no boundaries. Mm -hmm. So a lot needs to happen. And also with venture, just from the perspective of how competitive it is right now, I hope that it becomes a little bit more, maybe collaborative, more collaborative. competitive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, the funny thing about that's an interesting point is that we can all work together because we can all, everybody's writing different sizes, every size checks, everyone's doing things a little bit differently. So if you can find all the synergies together, why not work together? You're just moving things forward in a different kind of way faster, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But also just make like, for example, the valuations and specifically Silicon Valley are in, insane, right? Some of the Very, private yes. market valuations are higher than public market. And so, and so quantitatively also a just fairer market. I hope for that in, in two years as well. As history has shown us, they, the <laughs> keeps going. The stick is like a hockey stick rather than leveling a, down. A slow, yeah. uh, the, the normal slope kind of slope. Mm -hmm. curve. Exactly. So those are well, kind of my two hopes. It'll be, it'll be interesting. Cause I think I, I, I like that second point. I think a lot of people don't talk about that as far as value, there's a value of being in Silicon Valley. There's a value of being not in Silicon Valley. And yes, the values are different, but are they that different? I think people are starting to open up to that, to the, it being more normalized. I'll put it that way. Uh, more evenly done because now you're not at that advantage of, okay, now I'm in Silicon Valley. A lot of people have left Silicon Valley. A lot of people are starting funds outside of Silicon Valley. So yeah. if you Starting think about SPAC. that, yeah, SPACs is like a whole nother, <laughs> like that's a whole nother conversation. But the thing about it is that there's like more pools of money other places now. And just to think like you have that one center centric view of, okay, we're just in the Silicon Valley life and everybody has to deal with it that way is I think that's fading a little bit. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I want that to expand outside of the markets that have been the core markets in the past so that everyone gets a chance. Yeah, good companies everywhere. <laughs> exactly. Isn't that the purpose of investing? You're supposed to be finding good companies. <laughs> yeah, find the gems, exactly, I mean, Every, you know, everywhere. They could, yeah. they could be anywhere, gems could be anywhere. Totally. Yeah. It's all good. All right, Sally Jane from SAPIO. Thank you so much for being on the Female VC Lab podcast today. And thank you so much, Barbara. All right. You have a great day. Thank you.